have I got a treat for you guys today. Uh, I'm going to be doing 5.4 liter 3 valve engine timing. This is the same for any 5.4 liter 3 valve. I think it's exactly the same for the 4.6 liter 3 valve also. It's basically the same engine. Um, from any year, from 04 when it was introduced up until, what is it, 2010 when they uh, stopped using it as far as the 5.4 liter goes. It's all the same. Alright, so no matter what you did, did you do uh, cylinder heads, did you pull off the front cover to do um, phasers and you lost timing, whatever you did, the last step they had you do was put that crankshaft keyway right here at the 6 o'clock position. And that's where mine currently is. And when you're doing timing, you don't want any of the roller followers to be inside of there to potentially be pushing down a valve at the wrong time. So they should be all out of there. Cams locked down in their position there. And also, your spark plugs should be out. So that makes it easy if we have to move anything or do uh, uh, rotations of the um, crankshaft down below here all those valves and every one of these uh, uh, ports on here, these cylinders is closed so we're going to have high compression so it's best to leave all your spark plugs out and if you get this far into the engine you should be changing those spark plugs out anyways um, so they should all be out so we can move everything freely and accurately so we're at the six o'clock position now all right, so after cleanup of all your items, whatever you're doing, the next thing you got to do is start reassembling all the guides on here so you can actually start laying the chains out on here. So we'll start doing the, the guides on here first. And a long bolt, if you got these mixed up, the long bolt goes down here. You should have really taken it off together, but the long bolt goes down here. And then the same thing over here, up here is the long bolt. And we're going to tighten these down to 89 inch pounds. They self center. Twerk them down. Alright, the next thing we need to do is get this crankshaft right here in the perfect position. The most important part of this whole timing job is that crankshaft being in the exact position. Now we got a special tool that locks onto the uh, nubs right here so we can perfectly time it um, and have that crank in the perfect position. But I'll show you another way that you can do without the special tool. And that's the way we did it for years before we finally got the special tool. Okay, so we're going to put that crankshaft keyway at the 11 o'clock position. I know that's pretty hard to gauge on there, but the actual timing mark on the crankshaft sprocket will be at the 6 o'clock position, something like that. So you'll be able to gauge better off of this than where this actual crankshaft keyway is at. And make sure you always go clockwise. And here's that special tool that perfectly aligns it. It actually goes into a nub in the front cover here in the cylinder block, and then it'll perfectly align it at the 11 o'clock position there. So what I use to turn the crankshaft without putting the bolt back in there is a 32 millimeter uh, six-point lug nut, or it's axle nut, uh, socket on there, and it fits in there perfectly. So we'll get it close. And then we're going to finish with the special tool.
Next thing that goes on is the crankshaft sprocket. And the, it does go on there a certain way. You want to see the dot. That's a side that should be facing out, not like this. It should be like this. push it all the way on there and there you can see that dot is right at the six o'clock position pointing straight down that's the easiest way to reference um, your actual position of the crankshaft without that special tool because this can be you know a guessing game whereas this it's straight up and down I know the cameras at an angle but this is straight down at the six o'clock position that is the most important element of timing the 5.4 3 valve. Now the way this engine is timed is a colored link system like this. You see one colored link down there at the end and then it'll be two at the other end. So in case yours are not visible or you, you can uh, they're not marked at all on there, lay the chain out like this and mark them just like this. Two at one end and then one at the other end. Now onto the actual timing. This single colored link right here I just showed you. That one goes in the bottom to that little dot on the sprocket. And then your double colored link, like those right there, those span over the uh, L or R depending on if you're working on the left hand head or the right hand head. Like right here it's an L. So we'll span over that and I'll get close ups of that. And we'll start at the bottom. We're going to pull it up tight on this side, and the slack's going to be on this side. Make sure it's still on there. Pull the slack. There we go. Got it pulled tight. And we're spanning the L right here with the two color links. And we're still on the dot down below the single color link. This is tight, and this side has all the slack. Now, we put in our guide. Something like that. And make sure it's centered in the ribs here. It's tight on this side. Good. And we're going to put our new tensioner on here that's already compressed. And this one on this side is a little bit harder to get in here, whereas this side over here is more, more clearance. So we have to give it a little push like this. Get your bolt started by hand. We're going to tighten these down. Now, as a post check before you start timing the right hand head, come down here, make sure that colored link is on there and line up with the dot. And then come on over up here. See, we got tension on this side all the way around and then we're centered in the L on this side leave your clip in for your tensioner and we're going to torque down these two bolts to 216 inch pounds and like I said same thing same procedure single link down here tension on this side. We'll drape it around the cam. And this time these double colored links will span the R.
up here we're good, down here we're good, tension is on this side, we're going to pull up on here, get the slack out, put our guide in, same thing, keep tension. And then as far as these uh, these tensioners go, they do go on a certain side, and they're marked R and L for each side. Bolt that on. Snug it down. And the same torque spec, 216 inch pounds. Now before you actually pull these pins on here to release tension, go over it again and make sure everything looks right. All your timing marks are correct, top and bottom. Make sure everything's centered. And once you're satisfied, just go ahead and pull these. And that's all there is to timing this engine. It's pretty simple, especially with the colored links. Like I said, make sure that crankshaft position is absolutely perfect, and then everything else after that will follow right along. Go over your bolts one more time, make sure they're all torqued down. And then the last thing we gotta do is this trigger wheel right here. Let me focus. There we go. You wanna slide that on there all the way. And it does go a certain way. You gotta make sure that the words front the word front, let me see, there it is. Make sure that's facing you. Besides that, we can start putting on the front cover and the valve covers and the intake and getting this thing back together.